The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, health, and the arts. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Terry Williams, author and president of Terry Williams Agency, and Jennifer Jones, the executive director of the Stay Strong Foundation. And we are strong today because the Oscars you represented, yes, right? Tell yes, us about yes. that. Oh, we represented Monique, who just like swept awards and then got the grand one. And actually, we just did, learned a little bit of history that we're the first African-American owned PR firm to represent an Oscar winner. Congratulations. So, Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Feeling very good about that. Yeah. It was well, a you very proud moment. definitely should. This is a, a highlight day. Yes. Now, yes. tell us about the Stay Strong Foundation. Uh, why don't you start, Terry, and then Jennifer can move into it. Well. Uh, Xavier Artis, who's my business partner, and he, he and I co-founded the Stay Strong Foundation. Our motto is that if we don't give our kids time, the system will. Mm -hmm. And with, with that spirit, mm -hmm. that philosophy, we create mentorships, um, shadowing opportunities for young people, internships. We've had over, mm -hmm. probably over 600 interns over the years. Um, to help them to develop professionally. We have a program called Terry Plus One because we know our kids will never, they, they will be what they see. So we take them to events that either we're working on or that we're attending, taking them to black tie dinners, getting mm -hmm. them tuxed up so mm -hmm. that they learn how to move through the world and introduce them to, to now, people. How does this differ from the Dress for Success program, which also tries to take young people and expose them to the corporate world? Well, I think um, ours, the, our population is probably younger than, than the Dress for Success. Those, mm -hmm. I think Dress for Success tends to be more for people who mm -hmm. are transitioning into the workplace or have had challenging yeah, uh -huh. times. So now how can, young are your, your folks? Oh, they as, as early as, as six, but primarily mm -hmm. teenagers is, mm -hmm. is where we spend a good deal of our time and energy. And we actually have uh, <laughs> a, a new program, an initiative that Jennifer will probably speak a little bit more about, but it's called Used to Be Me. And the focus is young people between 18 and 24 mm -hmm. Uh, to give them an opportunity to share their stories through music and poetry. Our kids are in a great deal of pain, and we don't pay attention to that pain until it goes public. So what we want to do is to give them coping skills, give them a safe haven to talk about what's going on with them and to channel it in a healthy way, much in the same way, you know, if you look at the music and the success of a Mary J. Blige, she's been through hell and back, drug addiction, which mm -hmm. she's been very open about, but her healing comes through the songs that she writes. Mm -hmm. So that's why we try to create opportunities for our young people to Now, channel Jennifer, it. you're the executive director yes, of Stay Strong. Yes, I am. What do you do? <laughs> what don't I do? What don't we do? <laughs> Initially, in 2001, when the Stay Strong Foundation opened its doors, we were targeted toward youth development. Mm -hmm. But since then, it has, it has redirected itself. Many of the kids that come into our programs, we find that there are, there are mental health issues involved here, and it stems from their parents, it stems from grandparents, it stems so, from so many different things. So n now we've kind of redirected, we have various programs targeting their parents as well. Like we have the Healing Starts With Us campaign. This is where we have the open book tour, where mm -hmm. we have dialogue, open dialogue. We like provide a safe haven for people to come and talk about their problems. Now, where do they do this? Physically? Well, at various venues. We have people that underwrite our venues, and we, we travel the world doing this. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens is you would not believe, Mr. Brown, the outpour from African Americans, what they're feeling inside the kids, the parents, the grandparents, and this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And um, so right now we're targeting the parents and we're targeting the kids as well through our used to be me a movement. This is where kids are allowed to tell their stories through music, spoken word, mm -hmm. and 
song. You know, black folks have been here since 1619, and we've gone through hell and back. That's what now, yes. why is it different now, or is it different now than the pain that blacks experience in the 17th century, 19th century, and the early part of the 20th? Yeah. What's different now? Great question, Roscoe. Uh, all of us have inherited the, the unresolved pain and suffering and trauma of our parents and our ancestors. When we were enslaved and we experienced unspeakable and horrific uh, situations, we had to remain silent in order to get through it. You had to hold the pain in because- but we did go to church on Sunday. Yes, we did. Yes, <laughs> we, we did. We did go to church yes, on Sunday. Did. That was that, our, that, was that, our that saved us. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. But for what you would experience like on a day-to-day -day basis, being torn from your loved ones and not being able to say anything ba about it, we had to remain silent in order to get along. Now, and so we've passed on this learned silence. But now, the silence is killing us as a community. Our pain is evident everywhere we turn. And we don't know what it looks like, we don't know what it feels like, we don't know what it sounds like because people wear their game face, their mask every day, pretending to be fine, but really dying inside. But we have so much violence in our community. And our, so that, that isn't hiding it, that's letting it come out in a very negative well, fashion. Well, except that we're not making the connection that nobody is born bad, mad, or yeah, evil. Right. We're born innocent creatures, and then mm -hmm. you're, if, you've inherited the pain of your parents, things happen to you, and you don't have anywhere to go with it. Very early on, mm -hmm. I was clearly guided to not show my emotional pain, to not most, talk most about black it. Folks are most just, black folks. Yeah. But that's why we have so much violence. We mm -hmm. have people who are literally walking time bombs because mm -hmm. of all that they've witnessed and never talked about, so that if you look at me the wrong way or you step on my gators, then two seconds later, you're dead. But it didn't have anything to mm -hmm. do with you. It triggered something in me that was never resolved. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is, as Jennifer mentioned, we launched the Healing Starts With Us campaign at the Shabazz Center. Mm -hmm. We had Monique, who spoke for the very first time about her depression, mm -hmm. said she never spoke about it before because she didn't know how people would receive mm -hmm. her. Terry McMillan, Ruby D, John Amos, uh, Jeffrey Canada, and Susan Taylor, and they each read, read testimonials mm -hmm. from my book, Black Pain. It mm -hmm. just looks like we're not hurting. Mm -hmm. And then we opened up the floor so that people, as Jennifer said, could share their own stories. Three young women spoke about being raped for the mm -hmm. first time. They talked and they wept and they talked and they wept and literally looked like new people mm -hmm. when they got ready to leave sure. because they had released something that had been staying inside because mm -hmm. we as black folks tend not to go to therapists. Mm -hmm. We think that it means that you're crazy or that you're weak. Meanwhile, everybody that we know is dealing with something. And also because we're faith-based people, we think to do anything other than to pray to God is blasphemy, mm -hmm. you know? Now, yeah. Jennifer, yes. when you work with these young people and they begin to bring out some of their concerns, what do you do to help, not you, but the situation do to help them? Because after you've talked about how bad things are, they're still there, well, that so history's okay. still there. So what do you do? Yes, it's still there. We have a network of clinicians um, and they're part of our wellness program. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we will refer these kids and their parents to see a psychologist, psychiatrist, so they could be introduced to therapy to see if that is the way for them and it does help them. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Yeah. We don't stop with the, oh, the, the touring. We don't stop there. We're, we're trying to find a solution, and sometimes, in many cases, this is the solution. But some of these things reprise themselves. You read many times about somebody who's found that they had been abused or whatever, and then they go ahead, they, everything's okay, and then something else comes up, and it reprises again. Yes, now, you're what do you do right. with that? You know, a very interesting uh, point that um, over this weekend, um, I'm a board member of the Jackie Robinson Foundation, mm -hmm. and there were three of us who talked about stress and depression, mm -hmm. and particularly because these were freshmen making the transition from, from home and high school to college. And there was one young lady who came up to me afterwards, and I could tell she was on the verge of tears, looking very fragile. And then she began to speak about something that she heard in our conversation 
triggered something inside of her and she spoke about being um, sexually and emotionally abused by her dad. Her mother was also very abused and her father beat her sister to death in front of her. Mm -hmm. So her father is now in prison for life, but the tears just started to flow mm -hmm. and it was just out of a conversation mm -hmm. about how we're really doing. Mm -hmm. You know, three of the hardest words I think in the English language to answer honestly are mm -hmm. how are you? Because mm -hmm. we usually lie. Mm -hmm. And the reality is the reason that this is an issue, Roscoe, that we have to talk about is that um, companies, if, if you're a business owner or you manage people or you whatever, you have to be mindful of how people are really doing because companies lose $51 billion a year because people get up and they go to work but they can't function. Mm -hmm. They're sitting at their desks or, um, and, and both Jennifer and I have had experiences with severe depression. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so we know of what we mm -hmm. speak. Or, or they call in sick all the time or they're filing disability claims. So it's, and, and it's really, really important to pay attention to how your employees are doing. And, and sometimes we have a tendency to think that the employee who's there from sun up to sundown is a great employee. That's somebody who's self-medicating and running from their pain. Mm -hmm. When you don't deal with your stuff, you mm -hmm. self-medicate with drugs, with alcohol, mm -hmm. with food, promiscuous, unprotected sex, yes. shopping mm -hmm. when you don't have any money, sure. gambling, mm -hmm. and the violence. Mm -hmm. Did I hit a chord when I said shopping when you don't have any money? No, I oh, know I a lot you, of people have money <laughs> <laughs> like you. <laughs> but uh, as you were uh, talking, I was wondering, how does someone recognize that they may have this syndrome? Well, it's very difficult to recognize that you have this. For me, I can speak for myself as an example. I was fired unjustly on, on a job for 15 years, fired unjustly went into a deep state, after being angry, mm -hmm. went into a deep state of depression, didn't recognize it, didn't, I just didn't know what the heck was going on with me. My family, they, they didn't know either. How it was recognized uh, through the work of this wonderful woman. I reached out to her after reading a couple of chapters in her book, didn't know Terry Williams from a can of paint, reached out to her via email and she responded. And she and I met mm -hmm. and we talked and it's been... It's been amazing. It's been a, an amazing experience ever since. Now and you have a new campaign. You have an ad that you're going to run. And we're going to take a look at it in just a second. Yes, okay. we, we have a collaboration with the Ad Council and SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. Okay, well, we, let's, look, let's look at yes, it. Yes, let's okay. do that. In Manic Depressive Bipolar, that hit like a ton of bricks. I really did not, I, I mean, people called me crazy before, but for them to actually say like, you know, this is what you are, oh man, clinically crazy. I don't know, if, if it didn't feel good. But David said I was misdiagnosed. It was post-traumatic syndrome. Almost all gangbangers are traumatized and dealing with some type of pain. This is the reason why they're gangbanging in the first place. My sadness and depression grew out of giving myself to my career before I would give myself to myself. And then I am out there speaking in front of thousands of people with a smile pasted on my face but dying on the inside. Hiding sadness makes you more and more sad because it closes you off. Giving voice to what you're feeling is part of the healing. We're dying and the most revolutionary thing and healing thing that black people can do right now is to love one another. Through the combined efforts of Gray, the Ad Council, the Stay Strong Foundation, the United States Department of Health and Human Services, and our spokesperson, Terry Williams, noted mental health advocate, author, and co-founder of the Stay Strong Foundation, we gathered the stories. Each story inspired others to share their stories, and we put them on film, in print, on billboards, and online. And now, the world has taken notice. You know, we're all conditioned by our society we're conditioned to 
show up at work, try to be nice to people, etc. Yes. But uh, every one of us, no matter how successful we are, has something that we are concerned about, some anxieties. Now you talk about depression, but some other people talk about anxieties. How do you differentiate between depression and anxiety? Well, I will tell you that um, I had a breakdown about five years ago, and what it looked like, I would wake up every morning with crippling anxiety, mm -hmm. literally sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. I would lie in bed for hours in a fetal position, mm -hmm. crying, mm -hmm. great deal of difficulty concentrating, um, ate excessively, slept excessively, was very, very irritable. Those are some of the signs of, of depression. Um, but the anxiety is just you literally feel sick to your stomach mm -hmm. and it, it, it's crippling. Mm -hmm. And I would say that some of the symptoms that I just went, if you've lost interest in your work, um, I think that touch is something that's important. I think there are a lot of people who are locked up in prisons and mental hospitals because they can't give or receive touch. If you hold in uh, anger, disappointment, and you allow it to fester, that's something that's gonna lead to depression. If you don't grieve or mourn a major mm -hmm. or not so major loss in your life, which is what Jennifer spoke about, her job, she didn't have the tools or the understanding at that time that, okay, this is a major loss and a transition. Mm -hmm. I need to go and talk to someone. Many times we have deaths in our family and my mother didn't mourn her own twin brother's death for 22 years. So it had a profound impact in her raising mm -hmm. my sister and me. Mm -hmm. So what we don't realize is that everything that happens to us, we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, many times when I'm in my therapist's office, she'll ask a question or I'll start talking about something and all of a sudden, Roscoe, the tears just start mm -hmm. to flow. And I'm like, where did that come from? It was always sitting right here, but if you're running 24 seven, mm -hmm. people think that busy people is a good mm -hmm. thing. No, you're running from something. Yes. Do you know? Well, what happens when something comes up that you really can't do anything about? Um, going to talk to a therapist or a counselor mm -hmm. is to help you to cope with the mm -hmm. fact that you lost a loved one and you there's nothing you can do about it but you can release it mm -hmm. i just I, I can't even tell you the number of times i'm in a session and talking and crying and talking and crying and when i leave i'm drained mm -hmm. but feel so relieved and it makes mm -hmm. me i feel very blessed but at the same time i feel very, very sad about the numbers of people, particularly people of color, who will not go to see someone when there is relief and that depression is treatable. Mental illnesses Definitely. are treatable. Yes. That's but, the key but thing. But Jennifer, this costs money. Uh, remember in the well, old days, the psychoanalysts yeah. were making skillions of money off of wealthy people. Now we recognize that we, many poor people, many black people, have these concerns. How do you get the service? Well, I'll, let you, I'll tell you this, Dr. Brown, um, through our wellness program, all the hours do are donated from all the clinicians. So people do not have to pay a dime. If they're able to pay it, if they have insurance, fine. But if they don't, they will not be turned away. And then just the other point to that is that there are mental health clinics in communities yes. around the country mm -hmm. where there are sliding scales mm -hmm. and, and in colleges, because suicide is the number two cause of death on college campuses, mm -hmm. but they have counseling services on, on, college, on college campuses. So we encourage, uh, through this campaign mm -hmm. that we were speaking about, mm -hmm. in about three weeks, we launched it at Howard University in connection with the HBCU's mm -hmm. first National Mental Health Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. And um, the ads will be everywhere, radio, TV, print, on the mm -hmm. web, and you will see people sharing their stories. A young man who's a member of the Bloods, people don't know that a lot of them suffer from very, po very mm -hmm. severe post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. A young sister who's a preacher's kid and talks about having gotten pregnant and was holding it in for so long and when she decided to talk about it is when she began to feel better, mm -hmm. even took a bold step of talking to the congregation because she was 17 years old, wanted to keep the baby mm -hmm. and she didn't want people pointing at her, talking about her belly growing bigger. So mm -hmm. she told her parents, whose father's a well-known bishop, that she wanted to 
share her story with the with the congregation. Mm -hmm. Amazing results. It's like you feel liberated yes. when you share your story. Well, what role does participation in arts and culture have to do with this? Because many of the songs and the drama yes. come out of personal travail. To what extent do you think this might help to break through some of that? <laughs> That's why you're the man. That's no, it's a great question <laughs> yes, because, and I think it's it's um, it is it is art. Mary J. Blige has mm. shared her pain with all of us. She has healed and made a good deal of money. Mm. Um, it's writing in a journal, mm. talking to a therapist, praying to God, asking Him to order your steps, and sharing ourselves. Mm. That's where the healing begins: mm. is sharing ourselves with one another. Um, I think that. You're, you're, you know, right on point about that is just finding somewhere to channel your, your energies. What about yeah. friendship? Very much. What about a friend? What, do, what extent can a friend help you to break through? Well, a friend can just be supportive. The friend can talk to you. Maybe the friend can identify what you can and help you to go get some help. That's the key thing that she just mentioned because we can burden a friendship by mm -hmm. telling too us much, yeah. too much. And mm -hmm. in the same way that if you had a heart condition, you would go to a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. When you have mental and emotional issues, you go to see a professional. That's, that's the best thing to do. But then the question comes up, are there enough professionals, particularly African-Americans, who are trained to do this? Well, you know, first of all, I will say this, that... Um, <laughs> we do need more mental health professionals in our community, black ones, okay? But I will say, like, with, there are several young men who are members of the Bloods mm -hmm. that I connected with a white brother whose name is Dr. David Grant, mm -hmm. who's a wounded healer himself. Mm -hmm. If you are good at what you do yeah. and you understand the human condition, mm -hmm. you could do it. You could have... Uh, a bougie black therapist mm -hmm. who would have no connection mm -hmm. to a member of the Bloods. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think it matters about your training and that you understand the human condition, but we certainly do need more of us mm -hmm. in the mental health field. We really do. Now, Jennifer, how can we get this message out to our college campuses, to our churches, and so on? I know you got Stay Strong Foundation, but that's just one little thing. What other things can we do to get this message out? Well, you can start by visiting our website. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> yes, it is. StayStrongFoundation.org. And the healing starts with us.net. And you will find a wealth of information on there. And it also has links to other agencies mm -hmm. as a referral. Yes. What you're really saying is there's more help available than people realize. Yes. But they don't know where to get it. It's, it's a combination of not knowing where to get it, but it's also which is what we're trying to help address the, the stigma. People don't mm -hmm. want to go because they feel that mm -hmm. it's a weakness or a character mm -hmm. flaw. So that's what we're trying to yeah. dispel first, that when you mm -hmm. share your stories with other people, you find out that you're not standing on that mm -hmm. ledge by yourself. Exactly. That's, that's what's mm -hmm. most key. I and know that we had that problem with recognition of age. It was the stigma attached. Sure. Exactly. Finally, we moved that. Magic Johnson helped to remove that stigma. Sure. Exactly. So, is there any That's person particular that is an example of how you can overcome this other than you? Other than me? There's <laughs> yeah, no one else. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Jennifer, um, who else? Well, like I said, Monique has spoken about hers. Good. There's an actress, Jennifer Lewis, mm -hmm. Donna Summer, Natalie Cole. Mm -hmm. Those are people, public people, mm -hmm. who have shared their stories with one another. John Amos, at mm -hmm. one, we celebrate, did you know that Martin Luther King suffered from very mm -hmm. severe bouts of depression? Mm -hmm. We had an event on his birthday mm -hmm. two years ago because we wanted to honor him for all that he was able to accomplish in spite of. Mm -hmm. Mike Wallace, 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. There are so, Abraham Lincoln. There are, you know what's real interesting? There's a new reality TV show in Great Britain called How Mad Are You? Yeah. <laughs> so they have five contestants who are quote unquote normal. Five contestants <laughs> who have been diagnosed with serious mental illness. They put them through a battery of tests and then three mental health professionals, they're supposed to determine who is who? Can I tell you they can't tell? They can't tell. <laughs> so it's like all of us are a step but away. With the help of Terry Williams and, and Jennifer, Jennifer Jones, and we Xavier will Harris. help people to yes. understand the impact of depression and how to confront it. Thanks again to Jennifer and to Terry for being with us on African American Legends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>